you know, picking up the camera, yes. you know, what I'm talking about, like, I don't know, that kind of like, I think that, it kind of like helped change me, you know what I mean? Because I went from being a bad dude to, how can I put that? I went from being a bad boy to wanting to be a dude that, you know, want to put my hood on, you know what I mean? I definitely want to say this. I thank God yes. for changing me. Uh -huh. Because I was like, I, w I was just like these, and that's why I love the hood so much, because I was just like these little dudes, man. I was lost. I ain't know no better. And I was talking to one of the OGs um, a couple of weeks ago, maybe like two weeks ago, and I was telling them, I was like, yo, Son, us dudes coming up behind y'all, we saw what y'all was doing, and we wanted to be y'all. We wanted, we didn't want to be like the working man going out to work every day. We saw that as corny. But in reality, that's the way to go. You know what I mean? We saw the... the, 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 the the dudes that was breaking in stores, the dudes that was robbing and stealing, and they always had money. They had the girls. They had, we wanted to be like them dudes, the hustlers. But we ain't know no better. We ain't know what they be going through. We ain't, we saw them going in and out of jail, but we ain't, we thought that was cool. And I told him, I said, "Yo, we wanted to be y'all." And then you know what's crazy? Some dudes was, you know what I mean? It was a bunch of young dudes, and these dudes loved it popping, you know what I mean? Going, you know, shooting their guns and stuff in the hood or whatever. So yes. I went over to them, and I was like, yo, son, y'all niggas need to cut that shit out. Son, one of the little niggas came and told me, he, he just shouted out, yo, son, we get that shit from y'all. Oh, wow. Okay. I was like, whoa, yo, that shit hit me hard, son. It made me really look back on my life like, Damn, we was some fucked up little kids. Not even kids. We was in our 20s, you know what I mean? But we was... You know what kind of helped change my life? What was that? When I had my daughter. Your daughter, yes. Yes. Son, yes, sir. Son, I used to stand over her crib and look at her because I used to be in so much drama. Guys shooting at me, trying to kill me. You know what I mean? All type of stuff. You know what I mean? I don't want to go into that too much, but I was in so much drama that I used to just, at night, I used to look over in her crib. So I used to take my gun off and put it up in the closet. And I used to stand over her crib and look at her. She's a little baby in the crib. I used to stand over her crib and look at her and be like, damn, am I going to be alive to see my baby grow up? I used to question myself. when I was like, yo, I need to change my life around because I need to, I need to see my baby girl grow up. I said, I need to change my life around. I tried, but... In a hood like that, it ain't easy. Like, it ain't. In a hood like that, it ain't easy because I had homies that, you know what I mean? They was in beef, and I ain't gonna say nobody's name, but you know what I mean? They was right. in beef, when, and when it got hot, they can't, you know what I mean? They used to come get me, like, yo, son, I got some beef over here, son, come, come with me over here. And I was the type of dude that, let's go. Where they at? You was one of them brothers, the, the, the quiet ones, when you would just watch. Yeah. You used to watch. And then when my son used to come and be like, yo, son, I got beef over here. I got beef over here. I got beef over here. Let's go. Right now that I'm older, you know what I mean? I feel like, damn. It makes you wonder. Like, damn. God really was with me. Yes, he was. My mom, I had a praying moms, man, and, and she said she kept me on the prayer list. You know uh, what I mean? Yeah, my mom always kept us in the prayer. Yeah. Getting back to the filming, you know what I mean? 
I kind of enjoy the film and stuff because you like, especially when we did the walk through Brownsville's man, because because I wanted to do that because a lot of people wanted to know about Brownsville. They wanted to see the inside of Brownsville because I know they heard about it on the news. You know what I mean? Right. They probably heard about it from relatives or that people that they know. You know what I mean? Talk about Brownsville and it was so much drama. People getting killed. People getting shot on the news and they hear it on the news like Brownsville this, Brownsville that, Brownsville this, Brownsville that. So my thing is, I said, let me do a little walk through Brownsville uh -huh. to let these people see all these projects ganged up on top of one another and let them get a little view of how it is in here. So that's why I came to you and I was like, yo, money, let's do a walk through Brownsville. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. And I didn't know it would go that far. Right. We got like almost 200,000 hits on that hits thing. On that walk through Brownsville. Right. And that's one thing I wanted to do. I wanted to let them see the inside. Get that visual. Yes, sir. And you did. You did. Yep. And I thank you for allowing me to be a part of it. Yeah, it came out. It came out. It came out decent. But yeah. we get. We we got to do another one. This we got to. Yeah. We got to do another one. You know what I mean? And we got to hit some of the places we ain't hit. You know what I mean? I mean, we can go all over. The we can do this. Show them. A, you can show them all the little, where all the little nightclub spots used to be, but like Dobies, GBSC. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, wow. All that little spot under the Young Garden them spot. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. We go to all them different spots and show them where people used to party at. You know what I mean? Because I remember you and my brother used to be partying it up. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God bless the dead. Yes, we did. Yeah, I, I, y'all was y'all was some of them, some of the regulars up at Dobies, boy. Up in Dobies, yes. <laughs> um, I don't remember Dobies. Yeah, yeah, I had to go over oh. there. I had to go over there one day because dudes was trying to play my brother. They ain't know that was my brother. Uh -huh. I had to go over there and let them know the son. That's my brother. That's that's right. He came and told me, yo, niggas try to play me. Oh, come on, let's go over there right now. Let's stop this right now. Yeah. Because I was, you know what I mean, I was well well known in that hood. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. but, yes, you, yep. And I was the one over there like, yo, that's my brother right there. It was like, word, son? Yeah, that, that is my brother. They were like, nah, son, he good. All right, I'm just making sure. How was it for you coming up in that hood as a youngster? You know what I mean when you was when you was real young. Okay, I'm gonna go I mean, back to you. I, I mean, right before, right really before you start hanging out with my brother. How was it? Yeah, how was it? How was it was for you coming up in that hood? Was it rough or whatever? Just, just, just elaborate a little bit on how it was coming up in Brownsville for you. For me, it was rough. I'm going to tell you, it, it, it was real rough coming from me because I used to be out there on the back in the, I don't know if you ever know, on a three train back in the days, we used to ride in the back car. Uh, I can't remember, trying to remember his name. I saw him a couple of years back, though. He used to be at Saratoga. We used to ride in the back of the train, the last car on the train, the three train. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Ride the right back car. You had to be a live nigga to ride the back. You had to be known to be. If no, you wasn't, I was in the back car with Bar Camelo. Right. If you wasn't known, you couldn't ride that back car, boy. You got, you got, you got beat up and dealt with and thrown off on Saratoga or Southern Rutland. I remember them days. I remember them days. A lot of dudes got on chain, got on the train with their jewelry on, and they ain't make it to Saratoga. You know what I mean? You couldn't ride in the last car. If you, uh, you been there, better not be in there with no jury on. I tell you that, but <laughs> you better not, because you didn't get get allowed in the back car with no jury on. Especially if you wasn't nobody. The back car. Couldn't do it. it was rough coming up for me. Though. The back car was a mess, boy. That yes. That back car that. I, 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 <laughs> the last car on the 
Detroit. You couldn't come back there. Back then, it, it was it was okay, but you had to be known, known somebody. As you was coming up out of elementary school, right? As you were coming up out of elementary school, and and and, and, and you went to uh, uh, got to junior high, and, and and high, you had to know people back then. It, it, it seemed like. In junior high school, that's when it all when it all started unfolding. You yes. know what I mean? Yes. Be because when you got to junior high, it, that's when it all started unfolding. Unfolding, right? Because right. it's like you got the super duper seniors in there, and these dudes was thugs. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> and but well, well, for me, I was fighting from fucking first grade. First grade up. From Puerto Rican, remember, you know Puerto Rican Rob from second floor. From second floor, yes, sir. Me and this motherfucker, we fought almost every fucking day. That motherfucker was a troublemaker if I ever seen one. Money, we fought all, yo, we was in first, second, and third, and fourth grade together. We fought all the time. Like this dude would throw shit at me, hit me in the head with shit, all type of shit. He step on my foot and then kick me or all type of dumb shit. And the teacher never seen him do it. And I'll get up and punch him in the face or something. And the, and the teacher always catch me. Always catch you. Always like that though. Word. Always like that. You never catch him, but you catch me. All the time. Yeah, it, it was. A, well, I mean, we came up with a lot of Stone Cold kill, a lot of gunmen, man, a lot of gunmen. You know, I have to thank God. I put him first. I made it to be fifty-three years old last week. Wow, God, that's a blessing. I, but that's check a blessing. this out: how many people we know that didn't make it to their twenty-sixth birthday? You know what? I I was talking to someone about that. How many? I was talking to someone. I can stand here right now. And I could go through name by name and say who didn't make it. Yeah, man. There's so many of them. It's crazy. Ones and, we and, came and, up with, even like the ones we just talking about, that was gunmen and all that. Right. A lot of them ain't make it. To, a lot of them ain't make it. Like they ain't even make it to their 26, 27, 20, 28th birthday. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> and, and to be honest, it's a blessing, you know what I mean, to make it to your 50s in that and coming exactly. you know what I mean it's a blessing to make it to your 40s a blessing to make it to your 30s 30, you know what I mean yes. and a lot of them didn't make it to see 30 yeah that guy said you put me on with the camera business and I appreciate it though I mean it was a mastermind with it I'm trying man I'm, I got a bunch of other stuff that I want to do I ain't finished man it ain't no over money matter of fact I ain't even gonna talk about that because <laughs> Once you talk about it, no, once you talk about it, especially on you put it on YouTube, everybody else gonna try to beat you to it. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Just like with the web series, I ain't gonna front. Niggas can say what they wanna, but they know Sonny Townsend was one of the first ones with the web series bull crap. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, I had a Five thing. After. I had a thing called about to blow up. I put a trailer on YouTube called about to blow up. When I had my man running around sticking up drug dealers. And I got this from my mans in them. You know what I mean? These two niggas, I ain't going to say their names. You know what I mean? They were sticking up drug dealers. Like everybody that opened up shop to start selling crack in Brownsville or weed. These two niggas found out about it. They was coming over there to check you. I ain't gonna mention their names, but they was coming to check you. And these dudes always had money in their pocket, and they ain't never work a day in their life. So you know they was taking nigga shit. They was taking, uh huh. I was watching The Wire too, and I saw Omar. You know what I mean? Robbing shit up. You know what I mean? I like yo. I know niggas just like that. I gotta put something together and let them see how my niggas got down. And that's what made me put about to blow up together. That was another little show that we was going to do. And you know what's crazy? Like I was talking about niggas ain't see the vision. I had Hyde playing the part 
of sticking up the drug dealers. And my and my whole thing about why he was sticking up the drug dealers because his pops had OD'd, so he hated drug dealers. So he was going around Brownsville sticking up all the drug dealers. You know what I mean? And I had him doing it, and this is how everybody else got ahead of me. You know, that money and violence or whoever, you know what I mean? Whoever, whoever else came out with web series. Web series. Because... How I went to jail and and we put our first one out. We did ours way like two, maybe two, two and a half, three years before Money and Violence even came out. How I came home from jail, like I wanted how to play that part because he had the look, he had the eyes. You know, a lot of producers, once they get that person for that part, they want to stick with that person. So he went to jail. I think he did a little one and a half or something. So I ain't want nobody else playing that part. So I waited for that year and a half for him to come home. Then when he came home, I stepped to him and said, Yo, how we need to do this, son. This shit going to be mad big later, son. We're going to make mad money later once we get our views up. And if we get a million or something views, then the network's going to come knocking at our door. They're going to the, they want the show. He was like, word, all right. So I told him, let's get it done. But we did another, you know, probably another episode or whatever, or a half episode. Then when I came back to him, he's like, yo, son, son, I really don't want to do this, son. Yeah. I was, uh, yo, I was kind of like, I was tight. Because he, he ain't see my vision. You know what I mean? Yeah. But to fast forward a little bit, once Money and Violence came out and their numbers got up there, he, they gonna come to him and his one of his boys gonna come over and be like son we could have been money and violence. I said man go ahead with that man. I said we, I was trying to do this because I had a vision way before these dudes. Yo back in the days when I wrote um say these boys. Yeah. I wrote a book just like Medea. The same yeah like son I didn't put the book out because Medea came out. Okay. My my book, the lady was called Rita. Uh -huh. I got this from one of my homeboys' grandmother. We went to go visit her. Yo, this lady was gangster. So she didn't have a big gun like Medea, but she had a little two two or two five in her purse. So she worked in a number hole. You know what I mean? After I finished the book. I saw Medea, and I was like, damn, Tyler Perry thinking just like me. Uh -huh. Wow, and I ain't, I ain't even do nothing else with the book. It's still sitting there. You know what I mean? Wow, well, because he came out with that one. Yeah, I didn't want people to think I was copying off him. Right. Now, check this out. I'm writing a book called Sister Named Sister, and I'm in the last couple of chapters, and he come out with a show... Call sisters. Call sisters. Wow. So how do you feel about that? When I when I when I saw it, I was like, "Come on, Tyler. <laughs> you you got me earlier with the Medea. Now you will get me with the sisters. But I, my sister book, I'm putting it out. It's called a sister named Sister. It's coming out anyway. I'm putting okay. that out. Okay, Sonny, I got you, bro. I didn't put the reader book out because he came out with Dia. You know what I mean? So. I'm put. I'm gonna put the, the the sister named sister book out. So I'm in the final, probably the final two chapters of that book, and I've been writing it for months. So, uh -huh. so and then when I saw he came out with a, with a show called Sisters, I just I just linked my head back and was like, <laughs> Damn! Uh, no, Tyler, you got me again. Hell. Damn, Tyler. <laughs> But, you know, peace and love to Tyler Perry, man. Uh, yes, you know, sir. they say great minds think alike. You know what I mean? So, I know he got a great mind because I've seen a lot of his work. And that just let me know I got a great mind.